Thank you, Dr. Okay, thank you. All right. Last week, we already discussed about the addressing modes, okay, which is the last topic on the chapter one. All right. And the addressing modes is uh, actually, okay, the way CPU can assess the operance. So operance is the data, okay, in various ways. So that is the addressing modes. That's the meaning of the addressing modes, okay. So the number of addressing modes is determined when the microprocessor is designed and cannot be changed. All right, so it has been fixed, okay, when the CPU is designed. Okay, so the way CPU can assess that data or operands is actually restricted to the certain instruction. Okay, so there are seven types, all right. So there are seven types of uh, distinct addressing modes. The first one is the register, okay, second is immediate and three is direct or register indirect five base relative and six index relative and seven base index uh, relative All right, so this is the seven distinct addressing modes. So how it works. Okay, so registers involve using registers. So it involves by using the registers to hold the data to be manipulated. Okay, so over here, all right. So when we have the register addressing modes, Memory is not accessed because the register is located within the CPU. So it is relatively fast. Okay, for example, uh, this one. So we... Uh, okay, DX and BX. So all of these are registers. Okay, so registers to registers. So DX is moved to BX and then EX. Okay, for example, EX is moved to the data segment okay, es data segment register so es2 es is, is the general purpose register so into the data segment register okay and then we also have the okay for example we can also perform the addition okay and bh to al so the the 8 bit to another 8 bit okay all right, so it must be similar in size. If not, then you will get error, okay? For example, so coding of AX to CL. So AX is 16 bit and CL, which is the general purpose register of 8 bit. So 16 to 8 bit is not possible, okay? So it cannot be done, so you will get the error. Okay, um, in the immediate addressing mode, as the name implies, so the, okay, so we have firstly the register addressing modes and now we have the immediate addressing mode. Okay, so the, in the immediate addressing modes, okay, when the instruction is assembled, the operand comes immediately after the opcode. Okay, so how about that? Okay, so the mode can be used to let any information into any of the register except the segment and flat register. For example, like this. So immediate mean that we are not okay. Before this is register, okay, register to register. But now we put the value, all right? Put the value, so which is called the opcode, right? So we code that. Okay, let's say 2550. So we move that to X. So that's called as the immediate addressing mode. Okay, and then we put 625. 
into CX. So, okay, so that's also immediate aggressive mode. Okay, another example. So 40 into BL. All right. So. Uh, Hold on. Some of your friends still cannot get in. Uh, give me a while. Okay, so that's the difference between register and immediate addressing mode. So in the register, so we use register such as AX, BX, and so on. So we put into the register, okay. In the immediate, we put the opcode, okay. Opcode, which is the value, okay. For example here, so we have the value 625 into CX, okay. So to move the information to the segment registers, the data must first be moved to a general purpose register and then to the segment register, okay? So this is the, you cannot violate this rule, so you must follow, okay? You cannot opcode to the data segment, all right? To the data segment register. Alright, so for example, the last instruction, move DS, okay, 0, 1, 2, 3, okay, so that is illegal. So because we cannot put the code into the DS directly, okay, but AX to DS, that should be fine. Okay. Okay, how about the direct? So we have learned register in the uh, immediate okay now it is a uh, direct uh, addressing mode okay so in the direct addressing mode the data is in some memory locations okay so now the data is from memory we want to put that into the register okay so in most programs the data to be processed is often in some memory locations outside the cpu Okay, the address of the data in the memory comes immediately after the instruction. So, to call is to call this data. So, this data is located inside the memory. So, how to call at that specific location? So, you remember that? So, we use the bracket, right? So, we use the bracket. Okay, so that bracket is called that as the offset the address okay so me that for example over here uh all right so we want to move the content all right so over here is 2.00 is the data segment okay double dot ds double dot 2400 so we so this is the address of that memory location you want to put that into the, the dl but the content itself is the ds double dot 2400 it is not the value of 2400 that we put into the dl okay so uh, cpu will figure out Okay, what's the value of inside that uh, content of DS2400? Okay, so I just note that. Okay, so if the bracket is missing, so it will be immediate. It will be immediate addressing mode. Okay. Alright, so that is different. Okay, so for direct addressing mode, okay, 
Did we have the bracket? Okay, uh, in the register indirect. Okay, now we have registered in the addressing mode, the address of the memory location where the operand resides is held by the register. Okay, the registers used for this purpose are SI. Okay, I stands for instruction. Okay, DI and BX. Okay, so this is the register indirect. So compared to previously, okay, so we have register uh, direct, right? Okay, so uh, sorry, we have direct addressing mode. Okay, when register indirect, so we have the bracket, okay, and that bracket we have the name of the register, okay, instead of the value before this. Okay, so that is called the register indirect addressing mode. Okay, so if these three registers are used as a pointer, so they must be combined with BS in order to generate the 20-bit physical address. Okay, so over here, uh, it moves the content of BS, BX. Okay, BS, BX. So the physical address is calculated by shifting the S left for one hex position and adding the X to it. All right, so same rules apply when uh, using register of SI or PI. Okay. So, okay, let's look at the example. Okay, so we have that. All right, assume that DS1120 and SI2498 and AX17FE shows the content of memory locations after the execution of move, okay, AX into SI. Okay, so we have that move. Uh, so in the bracket SI is actually the content of DS double dot SI. So meaning that the content is 1120, so we shift 1, it will be, so 1120, B0, okay, 2, 4, 9, 8. Okay, so what happened? So this is your physical uh, address would be eight nine. So what is the the range of this? So the data segment will be six three. So one three six nine eight. Okay. All right. So seventeen F. E. Right. So re you remember that. So if like this, so AX is put into this location. So we have two of this and two of those. So this will go to 13, 6, 9, 8. And then that 17 will go to 1, 3, 6, 9, 9. Okay, so that's how the information is moved. Okay, so we have this AX now is moved to the location of DS SI, right? Doctor, yes, SI, what is actually SI? SI I is the instruction. We need to look back. Uh, is one of one of the register. Okay, it is an instruction register. S stands for. I need to check back. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Sorry. Uh, I is the index, all right? SI is index. So S is source index register. Okay. SI stands for source index register. So among other index uh, register that we have is also DI. So DI is the destination index. Okay. So you need to mention, uh, you need to remember also here, this one is the location of the uh, location of the register. Okay, this is location of the register. Meaning that it is the address of that register. So the content, can, the content that belongs to here is actually uh, FE. All right, FE, and for one three six nine nine, the content is seventeen. All right. Doctor, yes. Unit SI can be considered offset value or what? You mean the, the bracket? Uh, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, two four two four nine eight can be considered offset value like the data segment in the previous chapter. Yes, uh, it is the offset value. So you need to add that. Okay, so you need to add that to the data segment. So, uh, if you are considering, if you are considering the uh, upper segment and lower segment, so SI will be at the middle of that. So, if you have the lower segment, so this will be your lower segment, right? So, if upper segment, you need to add with F. F, 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 right? So that's the upper segment of this. But at this location, okay, so at that location. So SI, you add to that, right? You add to the DS. So that's the, yes, you can call that as the offset uh, address, okay? offset address to the data segment so like that uh, like that we, we learn in the in which okay in the data segment all right in the data segment okay because this is the data segment whatever it is whatever it is uh, is put to the data segment okay so it will be the offset So this will be the physical address of that. Okay. So one three six nine eight is the physical address, and then for the as we learn about the little endian and big endian, right? So for the little endian, so we need to separate these two. Okay, FE and seventeen. So FE will be put into the location of one three six nine eight, and then seventeen will be put to the location of one three six nine nine okay all right okay so we have also the base uh relative addressing mode so in the base uh, relative addressing modes uh, we have the base registers which are dx and dp okay and a displacement value are used to calculate the effective address okay so the default segment used for the calculation of the physical address pa are ds okay, for bx and ss for dp okay so if it is BX, then we need to use DS to calculate the physical address. But for BP, we need to use SS. Okay. So DS is the data segment and S is the step segment. Okay. All right. So why uh, 
BX and BS. So BX is general purpose register. Okay, so the general purpose register so must be complement with the data segment register. And then for BP, P is pointer. Alright, so this is the pointer register. So it must be complement with the stack segment register. Okay. So let's say, uh, okay. okay, so this is the base relative addressing mode. So base relative addressing mode means that we add a value, okay, to this uh, register addressing mode. So it is called the base relative addressing mode. So we add actually 10, okay, we add 10 to this BS is at the location of BS, BS, and we add 10, okay? So first, uh, it will be, okay, it will be BS, BX plus 10. So when it happens like this, so you need to add a 1, okay? So you need to add, okay? then it will be moved okay into the cx okay so that's what happening when we have the base relative addressing mode okay all right and then um for the physical address so for the physical address is so for example the ds like this one so let's say the ds 1120 say 1120 and then bx is uh, 3132 okay so we add to this ds so we need to add one uh, zero okay so three one three two so it'll be two three three four one four you must add ten okay add ten to that so it'll be one four three uh, four two okay all right, so that's how it works. Okay, so you can either use okay, this command or like this one as well. So it works similarly. Okay, or move cx comma ten bx. Okay, so this also works similarly. Okay, that one's for BX case. Okay, now how about the BP? Okay, so for the BP, the physical address will be similar. Okay. So we use SS. Okay, we use SS rather than BS. Okay, so it is also similar. Okay, like this one. Okay, if SS value, SS value is 1200. We need to also add 0 in order to add with the BP. Okay, let's say BP is 1212. Okay, so the addition will be like that as well. So after that, you will obtain the physical address. Okay, here 13. Two, one, two. Okay, so it is also similar the code. So like previously for BX, so we have move AL BP in the bracket plus five. Okay, or move AL five BP. Okay. Okay, so this is the effective address because it is moved fifth to the fifth byte from the beginning of the offset 
BP. Okay, it's moved to the register AL. So that's the meaning of the relative address. Okay, we also have the index relative uh, addressing mode. Okay, so the, this is the sixth one. Okay, so the index relative addressing mode works the same as the base relative addressing mode. Okay, except that the register DI and SI hold the offset address. Okay, for example, like this one. So we have, okay, so we have this one, okay, SI plus 5, so it is similar like previous one, relative addressing mode. So accept that SDI and SI, so the destination index and source index register hold the offset address. Okay, so let's have a look. Okay. So for example, we have this. Okay, assume that we have DS, 4500 and SS2000 and BX is 12100. Okay, and then we have SI1486, DI8500 and BP we have 7814. Okay, and AX is equal to 2512. Okay. Alright, so we need to show the exact physical memory location where AX is stored in each of the following. Okay. All right. So we have this. All right. So AX is moved to that location. All right. So first we need to check. Okay. What is our this? Okay. So BX must be complement with ds right okay so it will be four five zero zero and you must add one zero okay for the offset bx it will be two one zero zero okay it will be zero zero one seven four. Okay, at twenty, so it will be four seven one two zero. Okay. All right. So we have now ax. Okay. So ax we have two five one two. So according to little endian, so we need to. To separate that value, okay. So at this location, okay, at this location, it will contain value of one two, and at one step above of this, so four seven one two one, it will contain the value of twenty five. Okay. Doctor. Yes. How do you know the X is offset value for the data set? BX is, yes, it's always because it is inside the bracket. Whatever the value inside the bracket will be the offset value. Okay. All right. So, okay, let's move to B. Okay, now we have SI. Okay, so SI okay, should be complement to the DS as well. Okay, so we should have also 4500. Okay, let's maybe erase this. Okay, 
so we have 4500 so our SI is 1486 okay so we have that all right so the physical address will be four six four eight six but we haven't finished here because we have the 10 all right so it will be four six four nine six okay so also we move a okay so we move a at so it is similar so at four six so similar like a so four six four nine six will contain twelve and then four six four nine seven okay will contain twenty five all right so that's for b all right for c so di is also similar so di must also be offset to the ds as well So the value for DI, so DI is 8500. Okay, so you have 0, 0, 5. So 8 plus 5 is 13. So what's 13? A is 10, B 11, C 12, D is 13. So it's D. And 4. Right, so we need to add with 4. Okay, so it will be 4D, 5, 0, 4. So at this location, we will have, also we put AX. So we have 12 over here. And at 4, 0, 5, Zero five, we have twenty five. Okay, for D, so BP, so remember that BP must be complement with SS, not DS. Okay, all right, so BP must be complement with SS. So, what is SS? SS is two thousand. Okay, so SS is 2000. So we shift one bit, so it will be 20,000. We add with BP. The BP offset is okay, we have 7814. 78 one four so we have two seven eight one four okay all right and then add 12 so we add 12 so it become two seven eight two six all right so at this location we will have 12 and then 27, 8, 2, 7, we have 25. All right, so that's for D. All right, so hope you're clear with that uh, index relative addressing mode. Okay.
doctor yes uh for d how do we know to use ss instead of ds because it said here okay, before this as i said uh okay this one because it's actually is already stated that for ds we complement that with the x okay but for ss it must be with dp okay so that's already uh what we call that as the rule okay as the rule for the cpu so ss must be complement with the uh base pointer okay p is pointer register so the pointer register will be uh, complement with the stack segment okay for the data segment will be the uh, general purpose register which is the dx okay you just need to remember that okay because that's the rule okay so why why we, uh, it is designed like that okay because if there is too much uh, register is put to uh, is assigned to uh, a register, a data segment register, then of course it is, then the other register won't have any function, all right? So that's why uh, in designing the CPU, so some uh, uh, some register are attached together with the data segment and some register are attached together with the stack segment, okay? Doctor, yes. In this my microprocessor uh, always use bit in the information. Mm, yes. Uh, when we use this, yes, is use little Indian convention when we assigning a value, okay, to the uh, data segment or the stack segment. Okay, so that's another rule. So you need to remember that. So whenever you have the eight bit number, so the lower 4 bit be assigned to the lower uh, physical address and then for the higher 4 bit you need to put the to the higher uh, 4 bit uh, so, sorry to the higher physical address so it is always complement so when you have so when you have a physical address okay so you know that the that physical address of uh uh, data segment register, right? So you know, you know that, and then one step above. Okay, we need like one bit above. Okay, so that location of the data segment will be assigned for the uh, the higher bit of the data or operand that we want to put into that. Okay, so hope that's clear. So in every case, so you must have both complements. So let's say 27, 826. So we must have also 27, 827. Okay. If it is 204, 7, 1, 2, 0, So we must also have 47, 1, 2, 1. Okay. So it is always complement. Okay. So you also notice that in this example, so you look that, that, we always use the even number as you notice right so usually the odd number okay the odd number will be on the is reserved for the higher to in order to put the data the four bit data into that okay so it's a complement right so you see that this is six, all right? And then this is seven, and then this is four, and then this is five, and then this is six, and this is seven. So for the lower four bit, we put in the uh, even number, and then for the higher four bit, we put into the odd number. Okay. All right. So. We have the last one, the seven one, uh, the first index and the second index. Okay, so we have uh, the by combining the base and index addressing modes, 
we have a new addressing mode is derived for the base index addressing mode. So it is based on the base addressing modes, okay, base addressing modes, and also index addressing modes, okay. So the base addressing modes is the the one that is here. Okay, so this is the base uh, addressing mode, and then the, this is the index addressing mode. Okay, so we combine both, so we obtain the base index addressing mode. Okay, uh, how it works? So we use a one base register and one index register. Okay, so like this one. Okay, so you see is combination, right? Okay, like this one. So we have this as the register indirect, right? So this is a register indirect. Okay, this is register. Uh, this is the base relative. Okay, so we combine this. So how do we perform? How do we know the physical address of this? We just add. So this is ds, bx, okay, and then add with di. Okay, we don't we don't actually add with another ds. All right. So for example, like, okay, I use the value like previous one. Okay, let's say bx is two one zero zero. Uh. 2100 so dx okay and then i have the ds my ds is 4 Okay, how about my di? So my di is 8500. Okay, so when whenever we have this, so the physical address, okay, will be, so we have 45, zero zero okay and then we add with so we first we shift that okay we shift that and then we add with the x okay so we take the x as two one zero zero so it will become four seven one zero zero okay and then we add with now di so our di is eight five zero zero okay so it will be zero zero six so this is 15 so it will be f so 4f600 okay, then we add 8 so it will become 4f608 so that's the physical address okay all right so similarly also for this one okay and then for this one we need to look here so it is it use bp so when we use bp it must be complement with SS, right? So this is not the S. Okay, also, this one is BP, so we need to use SS as well. Okay. All right, so we have this table. Okay, we have this table. So we have the, okay, so we have the segment register. So the offset register can be this one. Okay. 
So let's say we have the seven register of CS, then the offset register will be IP. For DS, can be SI, DI and DX. And for ES, SI, DI and DS. So as I just mentioned to you, okay, so why we don't put DP to the DS? Because the CPU has been beautifully designed. So for this same register, so it will cater the purpose of just this register only for the offset. Okay, so it's not for all of the register is done to specific statement register. Okay, so for example, like this one. So because, okay, so you look here. Uh, all right. So DS can accept these three offset register, okay? So you look here that ES can also accept the same set of the offset register. So meaning that it can be complement. So let's say you just want to put one here, then these two can be put to ES, okay? So it is up to you. So it is not, so it can do the parallel processing, okay? So it is not just, just the DS can process SI, DI and DX. So it can also be attached to the ES. And lastly, we have the SS. So the offset register will be SP uh, source pointer, uh, base pointer. Okay. All right, so the X86 CPU allows the program to override the default segment and use any segment register. Okay, so let's say this one in move EL, so in the bracket DX, so the physical address of the operand to be moved is DS, DX, okay, so as we learn, okay. So to override that default, okay, we need to specify the desired segment, okay, in the instruction as follows. Okay, for example, like this. So for default, Okay, BX will go to DS, right? Okay, but as we learn here from this table, BX can also go to the ES. So to override that, so we need to write like this one. So ES double dot BX. So now it will be ES BX. Okay. All right, so that's how BX now is assigned to the ES register. Okay, so like this one. Okay, so DP, the default segment is to the SS. But if you want to assign to the CS, okay, like this one, okay, assign to CS. So we need to put CS double dot in front of that bracket BP. Okay. So the default, okay, the default is usually SS and DS. Okay, as you can see here. But if you want to move to the different segment, okay, so you need to override that. Okay. For example, here DSBX, okay, plus 12, okay. And then here, you override that by putting the ES double dot. Okay, and here, this one you put uh, SS, right? Double dot. So now it is moved to SS because originally it is into the segment of the ES. Okay, so it is flexible. Okay, so you can do the overriding. Okay. And then this is the summary of the x86 addressing mode. Okay. So the addressing mode register operand is uh, right. Okay. And immediate is data. Okay. Default segment. There is no default segment. Okay. For direct. Okay. So operand is in the bracket offset. Okay. The DS. Okay. DS is the default segment. 
So register indirect also, the default statement is DS, DS and also DS for BX, SI and DI. A and base relative, we have BX, displacement of course, it will be DS. Okay. And BP, okay, BP it will be SS. So you note that most of the default segment will be DS and also SS. All right. Okay, so that's the difference between all of the uh, addressing modes. Okay, so that is the chapter one. Okay, so that is the chapter one. So we learn about on how to do the move command, all right? Move and addition command. Okay. All right, so okay, now I want to discuss back about the test one, all right? So it seems that I haven't given you much um Simon all right so I'm thinking to shift the test one to the week seven is that okay uh, what day doctor it will be on Tuesday during the class time doctor oh. is is the coverage the same Pardon? Yeah, is it the is the coverage the same still up to chapter one yes yes if, okay still up to chapter one yes because chapter one you just finished today, so it might be hurry for you to have uh, to have the uh, test one on Thursday. All right. So I'm thinking to shift that to the week seven on Tuesday as well. Okay. So basically, uh, it will be uh, one hour. Okay, so I will just take the time from 4 to 5. Okay, from 4 to 5. So basically, you will have time to ask any question for the first one hour. Okay, so it will be... Uh, okay, so originally it was on the 22nd. So now it is shifted to the 3rd. 3rd of May. Right? So it will be 3rd of May. You mean for May, Doctor? For May. Hari Sasa. Hari Sasa. It's next to the... Uh, I think so for the... Not, not next Tuesday, another Tuesday. So the next two weeks. Doctor, is it subjective or...? Yes, it will be subjective. Okay. So you need to know exactly, okay, so, so what we learn up to the chapter one, okay. So in the chapter zero, so you will learn about the logic gates, right? So the logic gates and so on. And then the, the instruction, okay, about what is, let's say, what is how many nibbles okay in let's say in 16 bit and so on okay and then you learn about okay, the registers so you have how many types of registers so you have general purpose pointer in that segment instruction and flag okay and then how to do the uh okay what is about the program segment so that we, you just learn about the data segment so you have that. Okay, so how to move okay the offset to the uh, data segment, then you obtain the physical address. Okay. That's actually most of what you do, okay? Most of what you learn during the class time. Okay, and then you learn also about the uh, the flight register, okay. Uh, okay, actually I want to go back a little bit to the flat register. I want to re-explain back about the parity pack. Okay. Let's me move to...
two previous slides. Okay, you see this, all right. So we have example last time, okay. So as we note that, okay, so we have okay, how the flat register is affected okay, by the addition of these two number. Okay, so when we add, so we need to do the binary addition. Okay, so what we obtain is 67, right? In the hex and the, in the binary, we obtain as uh, 0, 0, 0. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 0, 1, 1, okay. So the carry flag is 0, so you look at the D7 over here, okay. So because there is no carry beyond the D7, okay, there is no carry, so there is no addition of 1 over here. So there is not there, so carry is 0. And AF, how about AF? AF is the auxiliary carry flag. Okay, so we look over here. So it is also the carry flag, but it is auxiliary. So mean that we look at transition from D3 to D4. If there is carry, is bring, uh, is brought to here. Let's say there is addition of one, then it will be one. So of course, because we have one, 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 and then should be one zero here, right? So one is added to here. So auxiliary. Uh, auxiliary carry flag is one. Okay, how about the parity flag? Okay, the parity flag uh, states that uh, it will be zero when there is odd number of ones okay, in the result. Okay, and it will be one when there is an even number of one. So you look at the result over here. So we need to count how many ones are uh, in the result. So we have five ones. All right, we have five ones. So we have five ones. So meaning that it is odd, right? So it is odd. So when it is odd, then EF is zero. Okay. And uh, zero flag will be zero because the result is not zero. Okay. And uh, sign flag, okay. Sign flag will also be zero. Okay, so we look over here. Sign, we look over here. If this one is one, then sign flag is one. But if it is zero, then sign flag will be zero. Okay, so we look for another example over here. So that the addition of this gives you all zero. So of course there will be. Okay, so you look there, so, so you look, what's important is for you to perform the addition to see whether there is a carry or not. Okay, so 1, 1 will be 1, 0 and 1, 1 will be 1, 0. So there is 1. So your AF of, of course will be 1. Okay, 1, 1 is uh, 1, 0. So it becomes 1, 0 and here it becomes 1, 0 and also here we become one zero as well so actually there is one over here so that's why cf is one okay so for the parity flag so we look only for this value okay only for this value so eight of these values so because there is zero ones so zero is even right so zero is even so we have PF now equals to 1. All right. Okay, so ZF, of course, it is 0 because the results, all of these are 0. And SF, still 0 because here, 
at D7, it is easier. Okay, so that is about the flat register. All right, so it is clear. Okay, mm, what I'm going to do next today is actually we uh I want you to try, okay, to try the programming directly. Okay, so let me figure out here. So you need to basically to download the emulator, right, on your PC. Any of you on mobile? May I know any of you on mobile? No, no, no. So you are using your computer, right? Uh, yes, doctor. Yes, doctor. A PC. Okay. So we can download. Mm. Let me first find out uh, the location where you can download that. So we're going to download a Microsoft debug program. Okay, you need to go here to this address. I'm going to share you. Um, okay, I already shared that uh, address to the WhatsApp. Um, okay, I'm going to share here as well. Yes, Shada, it is 3rd of May. Yes, it is 3rd of May on Tuesday. The test one. So that's location, you can open that. Doctor, uh, 3rd May is Monday. 3rd of May is Monday. Yeah. Yes, it is 4th of May. Sorry. Oh. May. Yeah, it is already fixed or it could be changed to another day. When do you want to have it? Uh, probably uh, if it's Thursday, okay. Thursday. Uh. Seems like you already stayed previously. Yes, the stay is also fine for me. But I don't know. Maybe you want to celebrate Raya early. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because... Uh, okay, yeah. It should be fine because the uh, Raya will be 13 of... Yeah, the next Thursday. You still have one week uh, before Hari Raya, right? Okay, so anyone yeah. want to make it on Thursday, on 6? Okay, I will... Okay, any objection? No. I uh, should be okay. Doctor, the exam is only for one hour, right? Yes, only for one hour. Ah, okay. You still have one week, okay, before the riot, okay? So it will be a uh, question will be around four to five questions, but there will be some ABC, right? As you know, so something like that. So the marks uh, will be, I'm not sure about the marks yet because it depends on the question. So for your test one, uh, you uh, need to fulfill about 15%, all right? 15% of the uh, of the carry mark, okay, 15% of the carry mark. All right, so you open that, okay, so you go through, uh, let me open my window. Are you guys using Windows 10? 
Yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. This time in. Okay, so you can go here to this one, Windows 10. So because this program actually debug only works for the 30-bit windows. So because um, it will be error if you run it on the Windows 10. So you need to go here to download uh, another program that is called a PC emulator. Okay, so we have the PCE, the PC emulator. So you click there. Right, so it is, it will open this page. Okay, and then you can download, okay, one of the zip files from this location. For example, like this one. So you go to this location. Right, and then you can download, for example, let's say, uh, and you are actually trying to use the old, very old computer, with this, uh, which is the IBM PC, okay? 5150, okay, with PC-DOS version 1, for example, like this one. Okay, so I download this one. Okay, once you download, you can, okay, open the folder and then extract that. Are you guys okay? Uh, are you guys following me? Doctor, I did. I don't think you share your screen at that. Yes, I mean you have already downloaded that, right? The file. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Hold on. Doctor, yes. Uh, can I know again which which part that I need to click for downloading? Uh, this one. Uh, PC. Okay. I cannot see your cursor. Uh, doctor, I think your screen is frozen. So we're seeing one something else. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, hold on for a while. Okay, give me two seconds. Uh, so you already open uh hampa.ch page, right? You open that? Yeah. Okay, so, all right. So actually you are going to download this. Right, this one. So you can see my screen now, right? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, once you download that, and then you refer back, uh, so you go back to that, right? And then you need to run that this run dot cta dot bat right so you need to run that so this one so this file okay okay 
So you will be loading for a while. So you heard that sound, right? A beep sound. So you still can see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay, so we just entered the date for today. So what's the date? So it is from month zero four. So twenty and two thousand twenty one. Okay. All right. So you need to. Okay. You need to move to the debug program. So it is actually inside the book. There is an instruction, a clear instruction on how to for you to enter that. So it is on the appendix section. Okay, so to enter that, so you type debug, D debug, and you type enter. Okay, then there will uh, be a dash, okay, dash appear. And then you want to enter that debug. Okay, you want to enter, you need to type Q. Okay, then press enter. Okay, now you are in the debug, okay, alright, uh, then after that, so let's say you want to display all of the register, let's say you are already em emulating that uh, IBM PC, so you want to see what is the register inside your PC. So you type debug, enter, wait for the dash, and then type R. Now you will see, okay, what is your AX value, then you have your BX value and CX, so all of that zero, and DX also zero. So your SP is, for my case, so I have A790, okay. And base pointer, so that's base pointer register. You also have zero, SI also have zero, DI zero, and DS, the data segment register, you have zero four E one. Okay. So you are following me? Are you guys okay? Uh, no. Yes. no. So what's your problem? No, doctor. Tertinggal tadi. Tertinggal? So, kat mana? Ah, saya ramai dah. Okay. Are you okay? So, anyone still cannot follow me? You can raise your hand. Uh, okay, Lavina, you can also use this emulator as well. If it is Windows 8, it is okay. So have you downloaded that? So Lavina, are you okay? All right, so you see that. Uh, anyone else having problem? Or are you guys are following me? So let's say you want to modify the content of this. So R is, is for register, okay? So R is for register. So you type R. 
let's say you want to modify the content of CX. Okay, so you type R space and CX. Okay, now you will mention the content. Your content is CX0000. All right, and then let's say you want to put that content as ff ff so you just type ff 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 can you see that okay now you type again rtx to see the change okay now cx you can ff 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 okay so to see the whole Okay, now you want to, okay, you want to, you want to state that as an as. Okay, that's okay. Okay, so you see all of that. So all of that, now, CS become FFFFF. Okay, so let's say you just want to change the value Uh, okay, now you want to change the R, the R A X. Okay, and then I want just to put one at the left side, so I just put one. Okay, so either you type this or you can just type one, and you see that R. Okay, so AX is 1. Okay, and then let's try. You want to make some messy stuff. So let's say, let's say we put AX now becomes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, for example. What will happen? There will be error. Okay, because that value is above 8 bit. Okay, because that value is above 8 bit. Okay, so we need to so check back our R. Okay, so now we have AX A is 0, 0, 001, B is 0, 0, CX. Okay, uh, let's say we want to move on. Uh, let's say we want to enter the data into the upper byte. Let's say we have, okay, we want to access because we know that uh, the content of AX is combination of A hash and AL, right? And BX is BL and uh, BH, right? And C also, and also D. So we have CL and CH. DL and DH. Okay, let's say we put DL. I'm sorry, DH. Uh, R. R. DH. It is error. Okay. So we cannot do that. Okay but it can be for rdx so we can just put any value that we wish okay let's check again you see that okay now you have that your dx with that value all right Okay, so you, are you guys okay till now? Anyone? Okay. Okay. Uh, 
All right. Um, let's say we want to do the assemble. All right. Now we want to the use the assemble command. So meaning that you want to uh, move. All right. We want to use the move instruction. So we type A. Before this, we type R. Okay. So now we type A. Then A, we put A100. It's error. Let's see again. Why it gives me error? Okay, let me type A. So there is no free command here. So there is. R is fine. No, uh, yes. Nak request Dr. Tuliskan step nanti dekat WhatsApp ni. Uh, apa dia? Repeat again. Nak request Dr. Tuliskan step. Tuliskan step. Uh -huh. So the step, uh, okay. Nanti I, I will put that on the WhatsApp. Thank you, Rati. Okay. So let me Q. Uh, Debug. Okay, so it gives me error. Okay, you look there when you quit. Okay, when you quit and you enter back the debug, so it will be reset. Okay, so your register will be reset. I'm not sure why I type the command A is not. Um, it's not entering the assemble location where you can do the move you can do the instruction over there let me type um, okay so that's the content of the memory Okay, you look there so that's the content of your memory okay so you have the ds okay so your ds i think from uh 100 until 10170 uh, okay so that's uh your ds okay so you can play around with that. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm having a little bit problem with because it is actually not. Allowing uh, allowing me to type A, right?
Okay, anyway, you can play around with that. Okay, so we will continue on Thursday. Okay, and I, I need to look back on how to fix this, all right? Because it seems like uh, my command for A is not working. So U is actually working. So U is unassembled, meaning that you want to look back what we have typed, all right? So what we have typed uh, in the assemble. Let's say assemble, you want to move, all right? From, let's say we do the direct uh, addressing or we do the uh, indirect addressing or base addressing. Okay, so we want to look at that actually. Okay, anyway, so I'll stop here with that. Okay, Nabiha, you have any question? Sorry, Doctor, Dr. Khan. Okay. All right. So, are you guys okay? So, you, you already finished Chapter 1, but now we are going to actually doing the real coding, all right, on the old PC, all right, which is IBM 80, uh, 50, 50. All right, IBM 5050. So by using the PC emulator, okay, we're going to do the, to program the data segment. Okay, so we will continue that uh, on Thursday. All right, so lastly, before we leave, so let's take the picture together. So you have any questions so far? Not yet, Doctor. Okay. So let's turn on our camera. I will post the the steps on how to write. So you guys, uh, it's okay to open the program, right? It's so only you need the step, right? Uh, okay. Okay. All right, so everyone, please turn on your camera. Okay, uh, I'm going to count uh, from 10. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, give me one more time. Uh, Okay. Okay, thank you everyone. Okay, so I see you again next Thursday. All right, so the test one will be on the 4th of May. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye-bye and assalamualaikum. Thank you.